Uh, thank you everyone for joining. We uh, still see people uh, joining in. Um, so we're just gonna give it a few minutes and then uh, we're gonna start. Thank you everybody for joining. Uh, we're very excited um, to have you all here with us for our final event for our campaign for the CRPD um, of our wonderful candidate, Mr. Delia Fitusi. Um, today we have with us also a representative from Israel Civil Society, um, who's gonna talk with you about children with disabilities and education. Uh, I'm going to start off with a few house rules. Um, please uh, stay muted. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you can send them either by the Q&A function uh, or through the chat. Um, and we will answer all of them at the end of the, the, the panel itself. Um, we also have closed captions. Um, so if you want to have closed captions during the panel, uh, you just need to press at the bottom. You have an option that says closed captions and then uh, they will appear on the screen. And with us is also Zachary Goldstein, who's uh, giving us the interpretation for sign language. Uh, now, without further ado, I would like uh, to introduce to you our ambassador, Ambassador Gilad Erdan, uh, for his opening remarks. Gilad, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Yuval, and uh, good morning, everyone. And of course, welcome. I want to thank you all for joining us for today's event on education and children with disabilities. There is no, no one more fitting than Israel's candidate for the CRPD, uh, our dear Odelia Fitusi, uh, to lead today's panel. Odelia was a child with disability herself and uh, as an adult has worked to empower other children with disabilities. In her, in her profession as an art therapist, Odelia personally mentors children. She provides her young patient with valuable tools and skills that help them become independent, accomplished adults. Like Odelia, Israel is continuously working to advance the rights of persons with disabilities at home and at the UN. We played an active role in drafting the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which has had a real impact on the lives of many in Israel and around the world. Both of our government and civil society use the Convention as a framework to assure that everyone, no matter their age or their disability, feel included in our society. There are many Israeli organizations that are leading the way in this field. You will shortly hear from House of Wheels and uh, Mikhol, two incredible Israeli NGOs, and from the inspiring Sh Shira Senesh. I will allow them to tell you more about their amazing work on education and children with disabilities. But I want to thank them for joining us today and for making our society more inclusive and accepting. Seeing as it is our last event before the elections to the CRPD, Allow me to say a few more words about our outstanding candidate, Odelia. For those of you who don't know her yet, Odelia is the co-director of the Civil Forum for Promoting the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. She previously served as the chair of the Advisory Committee of the Equal Rights Commission 
for persons with disability in the Israeli Ministry of Justice. As if those roles and being uh, an art therapist aren't enough, Odelia also works at the Merhavim Institute to promote tolerance and diversity in schools and communities and leads a project with Israel's Ministry of Education to include more teachers with disabilities in both the special and regular education system. I have to tell you, every time I speak with Odelia or learn more about the incredible work that she does, I'm blown away. She has dedicated her life to advancing the right of persons with disabilities and making our society better and more inclusive. We have chosen Odelia as our candidate for the CRPD because the rights of people with disabilities are very important to Israel and we want only the best promoting the issue at the UN. We want an extremely qualified candidate like Odelia on the CRPD so that others can be inspired by her and experience the same progress the convention delivered in Israel. I have no doubt that whether she is elected or not, hopefully she will, Odelia will continue making an incredible difference in the lives of people with disabilities. But I hope that she is elected so that it won't only benefit Israel, but the entire world. So once again, I am very proud to introduce Israel's candidate to the CRPD, Ms. Odelia Fitusi. Odelia, over to you. Thank you very much for your word. I'm very excited to participate in the last webinar before the election for the members of the Committee on the Right of Persons with Disability, CRPD, for the term 2021 till 2024, which are scheduled to be held next week on the 30th of November in New York. The subject of today's webinar Children and education is really close to my heart as someone who was diagnosed at the age of five months with SMA type two, spinal muscular atrophy, a kind of muscle wasting, and who has been assisted by a motorized wheelchair since a very early age. My parents had the wisdom to equip me with the knowledge and support through all my 43 years which helped me to identify and realize equal opportunities just like any of my brother. My transition from the, a special education school to a regular school was a game changer for me. It made me feel part of society and the society learned how to accommodate and accept me and my disability. That experience helped me to express myself comfortably and to reach my goals, of which one of them is to be Israel's candidate to the CRPD. It is part of the commitment of Israel to activate, actively promote the right of persons with disability, more particularly women with disability, as a party to the UN Convention on the Right of Persons with Disability and a member of the Group of Friends of Persons with Disability in, in Geneva. Children in education is an essential element in the application of the Convention of CRPD, especially for children who are born with disability. Their experience is a unique one, but unfortunately, one that is not often heard among the committee's members. This is one of my add values to the committee if I'll be elected. Up until recently, I served as a chairperson of the advisory committee to the Equal Rights Commission for people with disability at the Ministry of Justice in Israel. One of the main subjects that the committee worked on under my presidency was the promotion of children with disabilities rights. Parents of children with disability need to adapt to a reality they have not imagined and prepare for. Several studies on this subject indicates that many parents go to stages of grief when a child with disability is born. Sometimes they even experience the child's disability with greater intensities than the child himself. Still many parents prefer the children 
to study in special schools where they can get all medical accommodation and response. In Israel, a third of people with disability are children under the age of, four, of 18, similar to other countries. And more children with disability who attend school, while over half are integrated in the regular education system, and another 24% are learning in special classes in regular school, they are still almost a quarter of these students who study in a completely separated special education system. The meaning of all this number is that still too many children will not have the opportunity to be included in the society as the young people and will later have difficulties to be included in it as adults because they were always separated from children without disability and have only known this artificial society we create with special education systems. A recent study in Israel which was conducted on 120 schools found that 70% had not yet made the necessary adjustment to accommodate students with disability. When you are a child with disability who is included in a regular school, you do not take it for granted being included in a regular school. You will always feel grateful for that. And you feel as though you must be the most successful student among the other children in any field. So you convince those who doubt you and probably other children with disability to be included. Convinced that you belong to the general children's society, that it was worth making the class accessible for you, that you are just like everyone else. I've been learned in religious school, and when my history teacher told my mother that I, like all the girls in my class, was talking during the lesson, my mom was afraid that the teaching staff would regret accepting me to school and scolded me. But I smiled in my heart because I knew I had fulfilled my mission to be treated same way like everyone else. My goal in the committee would be to promote the understanding that the state party should uncompromisingly, uncompromisingly develop an inclusive education system which will provide academic and social recommendation for each and every child. I believe that the committee need to promote unique projects for children with disability and to encourage the development of the self-confidence and pride. We need to change the social discourse from grace and mercy to equal rights, accessibility, presence, and inclusion. I have led two research about the perception of independence of young persons with disability and the aspiration for the future in this regard. It was a revolutionary study because it showed how the perception of independence of young persons with disability are internalized rather from the point of view of persons without disability and those who represent their, their hope to strive for and not the point of the view of persons with disability. When a child is born with disability, it is important that they understand that the choice of how to build the concept of independence is in their hand. To do so, member states will need to ensure resources for training educators, policymakers, and leaders who act and speak the convention language. As an educator, the young generation is my passion. And as I see young people taking the lead on issues like climate change or social justice, I would like to also see young generation of persons with disability empowered to become leaders and role models. For me, the way to ignite such changes and passion is by creative initiative and project such as the one which I am as a member of Merhavim Institute, leading with the Ministry of Education to integrate teachers with disability in regular and special education school. The influence of Israel has left its mark 
on article in the convention, such the right of living independently and being included, included in the community and the right of access to justice. In all the modesty, I will end by saying that I believe that our unique perspective would be significant also in the CRPD committee. I would like also to say a few words in French to our francophone audience. <laughs> Je suis honoré d'avoir l'opportunité de m'adresser à nouveau à vous en tant que candidat d'Israël à la CRPD et de vous apporter un sujet que me tient à cœur et qui fait partie de ma vie et de ma carrière depuis que, depuis que je suis jeune. Les enfants handicapés devraient faire partie d'un système éducatif inclusif qui offrira, offrira des aménagements scolaires et sociaux pour chaque enfant. Mon objectif au sein du comité sera de promouvoir la compréhension que les États partis doivent sans compris, compromis contribuer, développer et à promouvoir des projets uniques pour les enfants handicapés. En plus de cela, nous devons tous, les comités et les États partis à la Convention, encourager le développement de, les, de la confiance en soi et de la fierté des enfants handicapés. Nous devons changer les discours social actuel qui prend la, la charité et la pitié à l'égalité à des droits, l'accessibilité, la présence et l'inclusion. Je crois sincèrement que le partage des connaissances et de l'expérience est le, le meilleur investissement dans notre avenir mutuel en tant que communauté internationale et mondiale. Et cela est vrai à la fois pour un travail mutuel entre nous au sein du comité et avec les États partis, mais aussi entre différentes personnes dans une société diversifiée. Une société avec des voix et des perspectives différentes et une société plus riche. Et nous devrions tous nous épanouir pour être meilleurs et faire plus. Je pense qu'apporter ces perspectives est un outil essentiel pour aller améliorer le travail du comité et l'adapter à toutes les différentes perspectives. Ces perspectives que nous avons en tant que communauté internationale. Si je suis élu, je veillerai à, à ce que ce soit une partie essentielle de notre travail mutuel, parce que la caractère unique de ces différentes perspectives et ce que fait d'un comité international comme la CRPD un outil important pour apporter un changement favorable et efficace. Today, we have dear guests from Unique Project in Israel. I have the honor to introduce them. I would like first to firstly introduce an incredible organization which I had the privilege to be a part of and which had a meaningful impact on me and my perception of what I am, of what I can do and achieve in life. Beta Gagalim, House of Wheels. House of Wheels was established, established by Miriam Schwartz, an educational advisor who believes that children with disability should receive more than just formal education. They should have a place where they can grow as a person and be part of community. Having a child with disability is the whole household has 
an effect on all its members. Children with disability requires more attention from the parents on a daily basis, which often mean taking away that attention from their siblings. Hours of read, which provide weekends away and workshop during the week, help a lot of families to reinstate that familial balance. House of Ease operates open houses all over Israel. In these houses, houses, the staff works with the children to guide them and teach them about independence, responsibility, leadership, so to help them face the obstacles and challenges life presents them. House of Ease is a consulting status for the UN and celebrating 40 years of operation, and we are glad to have with us worker, volunteer, and member of, of organization. With us today are Ms. Danielle Tesler, a volunteer with House of Wheels South Branch, and her member, Adi Goldschmidt, who is also a stand-up comedian. Adi was speaking Hebrew, and then Ms. Danielle will translate him to English. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, so hi, I'm Danielle. Um, I live in Kibbutz Mefalsim in the south of Israel. Uh, I have been volunteering at Beta Galgalim House of Wheels since 2013. Um, I was studying at the university and I heard about it from my sister and I was looking for a place to volunteer. And I remember the first weekend I sat with whoever was running the house and she told me this is a big commitment and you need to stay at least two years. So seven plus years later, I have madly fallen in love with that place. Um, what we actually do is we have um, groups of kids and volunteers that come uh, once a month for a weekend um, from Friday uh, till Saturday evening. Um, and we, we have fun, we have fun together and we learn together and we talk and we have activities. Um, there are basically two main goals. Um, the first one and the main one is really to allow these kids to feel like they're equal. All the people around them, everybody has a different kind of disability. Uh, some of the kids who might be the weakest in their school because they're in a regular educational system suddenly are the strongest ones and can help other people. Um, and the other one is really, as Odelia said, kind of let the household, the families, the parents have a weekend where they know their kids are loved and taken care of um, all over. They do not come with any of their caretakers. We kind of take that role on ourselves also. Um, and it might be awkward and weird at the beginning, but after a few weekends, it's just completely normal and that's how we do it. Um, so Beta Galgalim has different houses all over Israel. There's six physical houses. Um, four are uh, Hebrew speakers. Um, we've got two in uh, for Arab speakers um, in order to kind of let people feel at home as much as they can. Um, and we do have also uh, one group of um, Haredi ultra-Orthodox. Again, it's very important for everybody to feel at home. Um, so we really made sure that everybody kind of feels as much as they can in a family and that it's inclusive. Um, there are 470 um, kids throughout the organization and over 500 volunteers, um, which is something that's very unique about Beta Galgalim, mm -hmm. I think. Um, the fact that the main power behind everything is volunteers. And these are people that for years and years give up a weekend once a month with their family, with their friends, from their studies and kind of come and completely lock everything out and commit yourself to these weekends. Um, I can say that at this point, my best friends have come out um, from Beta Galgalim. Um, it is 100% another family for me, as far as I'm concerned. I look forward for the, to the weekends with them because it fills me up in ways that words cannot express. Um, and I think that's it, Adi. Thank, Thank you, Danielle. Adi.
Now it's your Hello, time. Hello everyone. My name is Adi Goldschmidt. I'm uh, 14 years old. I live in Ofakim. And uh, I, I'm a participant in Beta Galgalim. And I want to tell you all that I have a lot of fun there. Uh, I remember when I first started, like I think it was 2016, uh, and I started to go to Beta Galgalim and I was shy at first because I don't, uh, I, I was really shy at first because it was my first time being on a weekend outside my house without my parents. Uh, but now I am like almost five years in Beta Galim and I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of new friends and uh, like uh, Daniel said, I can't wait every time uh, in the month for the weekend to come because I really love to be in Beta Galim. Uh, I had a lot of fun there, a lot of friends, good food. It, I think it's really important to say. And uh, Except the weekends, we are also having a summer camp, which I also really anticipate for because, again, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and I think... Uh, okay. um, you surprised us with your English, but you can do in Hebrew also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mm. Wait, I'm just thinking about what to say, sorry. You talk about the, the camp. Ah, uh, the summer camp that we have each year is something that we have five days of a summer camp outside the house, again, without the parents or the siblings to bother me. But and uh, we are doing a lot of uh, cool and fun activities, and uh, everyone can do them because we are there are a lot of different kids in Beta Galgalim. Some of them are in uh, sitting on a wheelchair like me. Yeah. Some of them uh, can't uh, walk really well, uh, but still there is a place for everyone, and we have a ton of fun really. Thank you very much, Adi. What a wonderful mm -hmm. English. I wish I would have like that English as you're speaking. We will go, we will go to our next guest. One moment. Okay. Uh, our next guest are two incredible young people who established a new program in Israel, Mikhor, Empowerment of Children with Disabilities by Adults with Disabilities. Mikhail provides personal mentoring for children and youth with disabilities by adults with disabilities on a weekly basis. The organization helps children with disability to achieve independence, self-fulfillment, and contribute to the society. The organization believes that these tools will help children with disabilities to minimize the gap they face in society, the feeling of loneliness, dependence on other and on governmental service. Tomer and Josh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So good to be here. I'm very excited. Um, my name is Tomer Yatskan. I'm 27 yeah. years old from uh, Ramat Sharon, is uh, near Tel Aviv in Israel. And my story begins uh, when I was born 27 uh, years ago. Uh, I was born like any other kid. But uh, a few minutes later, the doctor spotted a, a very little dot on my back and that no one knows what it's going to lead to. But uh, the one thing was for sure, I'm going to be uh, disabled for the rest of my life. Uh, and I was grew up like this. I've been through over 10 different surgeries uh, that uh, uh, affected on my legs. And in one of the surgeries when, when I was 13 years, 13 years old, uh, I remember that I'm laying on a bed, on a hospital bed, and four white walls surround me. And the only thing I think about is that I'm not gonna have any future in this life. I saw my friends uh, walking around playing soccer and, and basketball. Uh, and then I look at me, and so a young kid uh, with no 
with no dreams and no hope at all. And in, the, in this point, when you're building your character and building your thoughts about life, uh, the, way, uh, the way down, the way to, to stick with those thoughts for the rest of your life is very easy. And when I was, when, uh, when I'm looking back at the time now, uh, I, feel, I feel that the easy way was to give up, uh, to, be, to feel mercy about myself. And it was the natural way because in fact, I was uh, laying on bed um, and it was a terrible situation. And I've decided that in my mature life, I will help uh, kids like I was to, to, to be better, to prevent them my uh, difficult exper experiment, to teach them what disability means, to teach them how to live and live good with disability and to be the best person they could be. Uh, we, want, we don't want the, the disability of any kind will stop any children from being who, whoever he can be in the end. And that's why we founded uh, Mikol. I'm one of the founders of Mikol uh, two years ago. Uh, we decided to reach out those kids. We, we decided to use our experiment as people, mature people that facing disability from, for all, all, all their lives and to use this experiment to affect children that, uh, that facing the problems that disability now. Uh, and we decided uh, to build unique program and, un and, unique, uh, and unique process that will be led not uh, by uh, professionals that we faced so many times along the way. The process is, lead, is led by people with disability from any kind, for, uh, the, the, those people know from first, from first degree what disability feels like, what are the thoughts, they know exactly um, how to deal with disability. And we're using this experiment uh, to, to help those children, to help them, to give them support, to build the relationships between uh, the, adult, uh, the adult and the children, and uh, to become uh, like brick brothers, like uh, very good friends that knows how to deal with disability. And we teach them uh, on a weekly basis how to do it. Uh, the name of Mikhol, uh, for who does not uh, speak Hebrew, Mikhol is uh, like paintbrush in English. We want to give the children the paintbrush, the ability to, to paint their future. We don't want to build, the, to build the future for them. We just give them the tools to do it themselves. Uh, Josh, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tomer. Hi, everyone. My name is Josh. I am very excited and uh, honored to be here uh, with you today. I am uh, uh, 32 years old. I'm living in Yavne. I am a graphic designer. I am a social activist, one of the founders of uh, Mikol, as uh, Thomas says. And uh, I'm dealing uh, for my whole life from birth uh, with uh, vision uh, disability. I, has a, I have a vision disability called coloboma, which means some of uh, my uh, parts in my eyes is missing. And therefore I can see as everyone. And I want to, to uh, explain you how we implement the idea of Mikol uh, in the field. So we are working on four different aspects in Mikol. The first one, as Thomas says, is empowering children and youth with disabilities by adult experience uh, this, uh, uh, with disabilities. And the second thing is we also understand that the parents is the most effective way to uh, uh, raise kids, to educate them, uh, to uh, accept themselves. And during the years, we saw a lot of uh, parents that they don't know exactly how to deal with the disability of their child, how, uh, what the things that they can do, uh, how to call for help and how to uh, uh, understand better uh, the, the issues and the, the things that the children is uh, wanting. And we also uh, uh, give uh, with Mikol uh, for those uh, parents, the um, guidance 
uh, our godness. Uh, we are, uh, as Thomas says, people with uh, life experience with disabilities. We can share, we can tell those parents how uh, we felt when we were kids in some of various situations. And therefore we can help them to raise their kids in the better way, not uh, um, not to be in the first in, in the in the uh, in in the front, but also to you know to go head in hand together uh, with the parents. This is the second aspect of our uh, work. The th the third uh, aspect is um, the most. Um, Talk uh, the most thing that uh, people talk about uh, 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 people with disabilities today, the employment thing, employment of people with disabilities is something that we are um, understand is important for them to get you know forward to their, their lives and therefore we understood that the adults with disabilities that will be those who will uh, go for um, adventure, for um, process with uh, some of kids that uh, have also disabilities, we want them to be not uh, volunteers, but we want them to be employment. We want to give them, give them a salary, uh, a wage for every, uh, uh, every step and every hour that they will empower uh, other people. And we understand this is uh, something that uh, goes from bottom up and top down. Top down is, you know, to go uh, um, and help from, uh, to give the help for those kids by adults with disabilities. And the, the top down, uh, the uh, bottom up is, uh, uh, is the empowerment of uh, children with disabilities. Um, the other thing is we understood that if we want uh, a real, um, good uh, process, we need to have a model, a program model, and we came up with a model we, we wrote that based f uh, on our lives. And um, this is the model that helped the, uh, uh, the, um, the role models of us uh, to uh, understand what they need to do in every step of the process of the empowerment. Mm. The last thing is that we have a big vision is true, but how we uh, implemented in the field. So in the uh, back in few uh, months, uh, when the big and the worst days of the Corona virus uh, has just arrived, we also tried to try to understand what we're going to do doing work and only call. We expected to uh, get them together, the uh, the role model and the children and. We can because there's a quarantine and we can uh, get them together. What we did is to get them together in the Zoom uh, from far away, but uh, the most close that we can. And we did it in back in March. We had about 50 different conversations. Uh, the parents was very, very, very amazed. And they gave us a, really, a very good uh, um, 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 words. And they says that, the conversations was really helpful for the kids. And also our role models felt for the first time, I think that they can be somebody, not just, you know, that takes, but give for the others. This is what we do. This is Mikhon. And like the center says here, uh, back, back, in, back in me, it's all about us, that's it. And this is Mikhon. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Tom and Josh. Uh, with us today are also uh, Mr. Sami Jabrin, the manager of the Arab Society in Wadi Ara of Better Gergelim. Sami has been with the House of Wheels for more than seven years, and he is today with one of his, of his lovely house member, Hajar Marajuk. Mr. Sami and Hajar will speak in Arabic, and then Mrs. Sousan Hassan from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will translate them into English. The floor is yours. Marhaba, it's me, Sami Jabarin, from Medina Simbel Fahim. I'm a Kibet Gelgalim on the Sabah Sonawa. 
وبدات عملي كمدير في بيت هجلجليين في سنه 2016 اي ما يقارب اربع سنوات يعتبر بيت هجلجليين في رعواد عارة واحد او احد سته بيوت تتواجد في انحاء البلاد في اسرائيل بيت هجلجليين يعمل على دمج هذه الشريحه من الاشخاص في المجتمع على تنميه مهاراتهم دمجهم واستقلاليتهم بيت هجلجليين خلال الفتره السبع سنوات قمت بانشاء ثلاث مجموعات للاشخاص ذوي محدوديه الحركه كل فرقه تحوي 15 فرد نعمل على استضافتهم في نهايه الاسبوع وفي دورات اسبوعيه في بيتنا في مدينه الخديره نعمل بهذه الطريقه لدمجهم مع المجتمع برقه متطوعين من منطقه وادي عاره وضواحيها لديك البيت في وادي عاره في بيت جلجليم اي ما يزيد عن 40 متطوع اغلبهم يحضرون من المدارس الثانويه وهناك متطوعين الذين انهوا المرحله الثانويه ويتعلمون في الجامعه الطلاب والمتطوعين طبعا يعملوا في لقاءاتنا معا على عمل فعاليات في كل المجالات سواء كانت اجتماعيه عاطفيه وفعاليات في الفنون الرياضه الموسيقى الطبخ المسرح العاب تفكير وكل شيء يشمل كل شيء الفعاليات التي نقوم بها بالاضافه الى ثلاث فرق للي هناك ايضا فرقه البالغين اي للاشخاص ذوي محدوديه الحركه الذين يبلغ اعمارهم او تتراوح اعمارهم فوق ال 21 سنه هؤلاء الاشخاص يلتقون كل يوم احد في بيتهم في مدينه الخديره لترقي محاضره في جميع في جميع المواضيع ويتحدثون ويعدون الطعام بانفسهم وكذلك يتجولون ويقومون بنشاطات مختلفه كالتصوف، الذهاب الى البرد وكذلك البريد. بيت هجلجليم يعتبر ركن اساسي طبعا لنا في وادي عاره لانه طبعا للطلاب والاهاليهم وكذلك للمتطوعين. بيت الجلجليم أكثر ما منح هؤلاء الطلاب هي الاستقلالية في في مجال إنه يقرب من المجتمع بحيث ينجح الطالب في إنشاء صداقات مع الآخرين كما وينمي مهارته اتجاه ما يحب ويساعده في تقوية شخصيته وطلاقة لسانه والعمل على اتخاذ القرارات بنفسه. So, Sanya, will you translate what uh, Sami said in English? Okay. Good evening from Israel. So, my name is Sami Jabarin from the city of Emel Fahim. I have been working in Beta Galgalim for seven years. I began my work as a manager in Beta Galgalim, Wadi Ara branch, four years ago. During this period, I established three groups for, of people with disabilities. Each team contains of 15 trainees. We host them at our Khadera Center on weekends, assisting them to integrate into the community. Volunteers accompany the teams. They came from Wadi Ara region and its environs. Altogether are more than 40 volunteers, most of whom attend from high schools, graduates, and university students. Trainees and volunteers work together during their meetings in various fields, whether social or emotional, they jointly participate in art activities, sport, music, cooking, thinking games, etc. There's also a group of 16 adults over 21 years old. They meet every Sunday at the center of, in the city of Khadera to listen to lectures or to prepare food by themselves. They go around and carry out various activities such as shopping, going to the bank, for example, or to the post office. Beta Galim is a cornerstone institution for both trainees and their families as well as for the volunteers. It helps the trainees to exercise independence in their lives, brings them closer to society so they can succeed in establishing friendships with others and to develop their skills in what they love. 
Our institution helps the trainees to strengthen their personality and fluency of their self-expression. We help them to work on making decisions on their own without hesitation or fear, as well as enriching their information on various topics through the various activities that we do. And Thank now, Hajar will uh, introduce herself. Assalamu alaikum. I ask me how the Ramadan is going to be. Like in the Ramadan, the Ago, the Bia Saneka, and I got Alam, and I got the Azara, and I got Alam to your mother as a gentleman, or in the Rabbit Alabet Hagel Gilead, in Hiran Madrid. مدير الجمعية سامي الجبارين أعجبت من فكرة ومن وقتها وأنا إلى خمس سنين بالجمعية خمس سنين بالجمعية Thank you Thank you Haja So good, good evening to all or good morning in New York to all My name is Hajar, I'm 16 years old I live in Ar-Ara I have a disability with CB that required me to use a wheelchair. I studied at Manar School, which introduced me to Beta Galgalim through Sami, the director of the association. I like the idea of Beta Galgalim. I have been a member for five years. Thank you very much. Last but not least, we have with us uh, the honor to introduce Ms. Shira Senesh. Shira is a high school and a middle school English teacher in Ironihe in Haifa, Israel. She will participate in revolutionary program called Teacher Without Borders, which mm -hmm. promote in the inclusion of teachers with disability in the educational system. The Teachers Without Borders program of the Ministry of Education in collaboration with Mechavim Institute enables teachers with disability to bring out the ability and their talent with the relevant accommodation and to become role model for the student. The program gives both teacher and student an opportunity to learn from experience what does inclusivity really means and how to see each and every person for who they are and as an equal. Shira, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. I'm very, very excited to be here in this extremely important event. My name is Jira Senesh. I'm 33 years old, and I am, uh, as Odelia said, an English teacher, teacher with blindness. Um, my story began 33 years ago. Uh, I'm blind almost from birth. I was born prematurely and went blind due to retinal detachment in both eyes when I was just a couple of months uh, old. Um, my eye condition is called ROP, which stands for um, retinopatial prematurity. And uh, being blind is thus the only way of life I know. And despite my disability, I have always aspired to be integrated in society and to live my life to the fullest. Throughout my school years, I went to mainstream schools from kindergarten through 12th grade. I was taught how to read and write braille um, over my last two kindergarten years uh, and knew Braille quite well by the time I reached first grade. This allowed me um, to study um, among sighted children from the start as the reading and writing barriers um, never existed. I was a good and hardworking student, some, some may say a nerd. <laughs> uh, I fulfilled all my school requirements took all the necessary matriculation exams and graduated from high school successfully. Two or three years after my graduation from high school, I um, went to the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and majored English in a combined track of literature and linguistics, along with Arabic uh, language and literature. I found the English courses most interesting and appealing and decided to focus on the English. I have always loved the language and what, wanted to broaden my knowledge of it more and more. Um, it took me three years to get my BA, but I didn't start my teacher, my teacher training right, right thereafter. I had always had a thought about becoming a teacher at the back of my mind. 
Um, but I was quite skeptical about my ability uh, to teach an entire class of uh, 30 to 40 kids uh, with all the um, objective difficulties and challenges and obstacles involved in classroom management, uh, handling discipline problems, uh, writing on the board, checking students' works, work, administering tests, and so on. Uh, so I let go of this dream until I finally decided to make the move six years later. Um, hold on. Okay. Um, ever since I can remember, I have always dreamed of becoming a teacher. I have always loved to teach and had an indescribable desire to, trans to transmit my knowledge and to share my experiences with other people. And most importantly, to make a difference in the lives of, of children or adolescents and to advance them on their way to success. I decided to train in English teaching because um, that is the school subject I, I love the best. Um, this was always, always my favorite subject, school subject. Um, and I feel most comfortable teaching English. I started my uh, teacher training at Oranim Academic College um, which is in the north of Israel and finished it at the University of Haifa. It took me two years altogether to complete all the required courses and to get my teacher certificate. Um, some parts of my teacher training uh, were rather challenging for me, um, especially the practice teaching when I had to teach as a guest teacher in an unfamiliar classroom in front of kids who didn't know me at all. I introduced myself to each and every single class I taught, told the students in detail about my visual impairment and let them um, ask any question that came up to them. Throughout my practice teaching, um, I had a double challenge. I had to learn how to implement new teaching methods, which is hard for every new teacher. And at the same time to find ways to compensate for my disability but I always remembered one sentence that my wonderful and adorable mentor teacher used to tell me. No other teacher can teach students what you can teach them. And that's what made me carry on and believe in my ability um, to become a good and influential teacher after all. Um, as soon as I finished my practice teaching, um, I began my internship at Ironihe High School in Haifa, where I've been teaching since. I got my job uh, thanks to this extremely unique and revolutionary program um, in the Israeli Ministry of, Ministry of Education called the um, Teachers Without Borders, uh, which has existed in Israel for the last few years and is considered to be quite groundbreaking um, in Israel and in the whole world. Um, that program aims at opening doors for teachers with different kinds of sensory or motor disabilities um, who have the required qualifications and suitable teaching skills, providing equal job opportunities for teachers with disabilities and breaking professional barriers that might as well prevent them from being employed in schools. Schools which take part in the program um, are granted an incentive of extra hours for employing a teacher with a disability in the course of three years so that um, even after the program is terminated um, the school should possibly continue to employ the teacher regardless uh, regardless uh, of the program uh, if the teacher uh, meets the standards uh, the program creates a win-win situation for both sides the employee gets an equal chance to prove himself uh, and to make a living in, in the educational system. And the school gets a great added value because a teacher with a, dis a disability can teach his or her students a lot more than the subject matter itself. Um, our school board and the entire staff uh, greeted me with open arms and our principals uh, went to great lengths to provide me with all the necessary modifications in the workplace. Um, I teach in one permanent classroom and instead of writing on the board, which I can't do, 
I type on the computer in the room. Uh, I have a Braille display, um, which actually functions as my screen. Uh, it is hooked to the computer in the room, and it basically uh, provides for me a Braille output of uh, whatever appears on the screen. And I also have a screen reading software, uh, which is also able um, to read out loud uh, what is on the screen. Um, it's usually muted in classes, uh, but it also has this option and it works uh, in coordination with my, my Braille display. Uh, the computer is connected to an overhead projector and this enables the students to see what I'm writing for them. Um, they actually see it on the screen and um, on the projector. Um, in class, I have a chaperone who serves as my eyes, um, reports to me uh, how the students are functioning in class, um, and sometimes mediates between me and my students when necessary. Um, for example, um, she tells me uh, whether the students have finished their work or not, um, if there's anything I need to know and, and can't be aware of otherwise because I can't look at them and I can't see them. Um, so uh, she helps me with that. Um, and I have most of the school books in Braille, um, thanks to um, the Central Library for the Blind and Visually Impaired in Tel Aviv, um, which produces and prints the book in Braille and um, uh, sends them out all over Israel. Um, and in addition, I, ha I, I have an English speaking volunteer who has been uh, working with me tirelessly after school and has been doing a great job. He helps me find material in books which I don't have in Braille um, and helps me check the students' tests by uh, reading out their answers to me, which are handwritten, of course. Um, and also um, in our uh, COVID-19 days, um, when we have to work with digital formats, um, not, um, and None, not, uh, not all of them are accessible to me. Um, so he uh, helps me read, uh, read out um, things from the computer, uh, from the, the different digital apps. Um, and um, he also obviously writes my feedback and grade on the students' papers, uh, whether they are digital or handwritten. And all the help and support I received, uh, I, I, rece I receive, <laughs> are there to break the technical barriers and to possibly create equal conditions for me uh, to be integrated within uh, my workplace. Um, that's it. <laughs> Shira, thank you very much. You sure? Odelia, you're muted. Shiva, thank you very much for your vote. Mm -hmm. So we will start to ask some questions. You, uh, we start with the first question. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is for Ajal. What does it mean to you to be a child with disability? Ajal, سؤال شو معنى إنك تكوني بنت مع إعاقة؟ أنا لا أشعر بالنقص كوني جالسة على كرسي متحرك وعلى نفسي متساوية مع مع الآخرين وأستطيع أن أعمل كثير من الفعاليات وأنجزات التي أيضا من ليس مقعدا على كرسي قد لا يستطيع إنجازها. I don't feel incomplete because I'm using a wheelchair and I see myself as equal to others. I can do many activities and achievements that also someone who does not need a wheelchair may not be able to accomplish. Thank you, Adja. The second question is for Danielle and Adi, Sami and Adja. Tell us about one experience that you enjoyed the most, that was most meaningful to you. We'll start with Danielle, or we we'll start with Sami. We we'll start with Sami because we are seeing already on the screen. Sami? No. Fadel. Shukran. Nathadath an ahadith tajarub awal ahdaf, illi khutta khilal amale, 
يخطر في ذهني انه في بيت هكالجاليين تعرضت مره من المرات لحدث مؤثر وهذا الحدث عنا لي الكثير في احد الايام خلال مهمه كنت في تجنيد طلاب جدد في منطقة وادي عارة في بداية عملي. فتجولت لتجنيد طلاب وسمعت عن أحد الطلاب وطلبت من والده زيارته ذات يوم. ذهبت إلى بيتهم وبدأت أتحدث للوالد عن الجمعية جمعية بيت هاجل وأثرها على على ابنه فما أن تحدثت عن الجمعية حتى قطعني الأب أب الطالب الذي لم يرد أن يحضر ابنه لأراه فمدعيا أن ابنه لا لا ينقصه أي شيء وهو يعيش بكامل الرفاهية والثراء في بيته وأنهم ليسوا بحاجة لمثل هذه الجمعية خرجت عندها صامتا مستأنفا لمهمتي بتجنيد طلاب آخرين في أحد الأيام تفاجأت باتصال هاتفي بعد, بعد أسبوعين من نفس الأب الذي زرته فأراد أن يستدعيني إلى بيته فتفاجأت لماذا, لماذا يريدني في بيته بعد أن رفض الاستماع إلي حضرت إلى بيته مرة ثانية وأمر طلب مني بأن أصطحب ابنه للجمعية ولا للفعاليات أخبرته كيف يعني كيف ذلك ما الذي تغير قال لي بأن ابنه صاحب لطالب آخر هو متواجد عندنا في جمعية بيتها جلجلية وقد حدث الطلاب والمدرسة عن الفعاليات والرحلات ما نقوم فيه بالجمعية ف... يعني أعجبني الشيء أنه كيف إحنا بجمعية بيتها جلجلين بالحدث هذا غيرنا مفهوم مفهوم الناس اتجاه كلمة جمعية الظاهر يتبين لي أنه الفهم كان خاطئ فهم الناس لاتجاه جمعية كان خاطئ وسلبي فعلى أثرها أنه بيت جلجلين وصل فكرة بعتقد مفلة وممتازة في منطقة نواد عارة مما دعا الطلاب والمتطوعين للدخول في هذه الجمعية والمشاركة هذا هو حدث مؤثر مثلا يراودنا حتى الآن هذا الحدث منذ أكثر من أربع سنوات شكرا سامي During my work in Beta Galgalim I was exposed to a profound event that meant a lot to me One day during a mission of recruiting trainees to the Beta Galgalim, we had a home visit to a potential trainee. When we started talking about the association and its various cont contents, his father interrupted me, claiming that his son does not miss anything. He lives in full luxury and wealth in his home and they don't need such associations. I went out silently and appealed to my mission to recruit other students. Soon after, surprisingly, the father called me he said that he would very much like his son to join the association because he was exposed to a friend of him who is a member of our association who shared the various and enjoyable activities that we do and the many relations, relationships that are built between trainees, volunteers and the atmosphere. In fact, Beta Galgalim gained a lot of trust among the Arab society too. Ajal, what is your question too? What is your answer to? Fadal. Yeah. The Beta Gargalim Naman Extreme Palia Mokhtar of Nifel Rasam Toba Regard of a Tosmia Malaka Axel Palia Palia Babdora He and this was the do. This was Nana Hatsarone 
ಶಾಂತಿಮ ಆದಿ ಬರದೆ ವಾನ ಆಯುಧಾನ್ ಮಂತಮಯ such as drawing, sports, cooking, and photography. But mostly I like olive harvest because it makes me feel like I belong to my country. I'm also a member of the Future Stars group whose members are between 12 to 16 years old. The group allowed me to go on trips and visit many sites around the country. Thank you very much. Daniela Nadi, your answer to that question? Daniela Nadi. Yeah, hi. Yes. Um, I've accumulated lots of experiences, um, but I think the most meaningful one was a few years ago. Um, one of the kids, every year we do house visits for the kids and we meet the family, we meet the parents, we see where the kids kind of live their daily lives. And in one of the visits, um, one of the kids who comes in a wheelchair to Beta Galgalim was walking around with a walker in his house and the the volunteers that went over were like quite surprised and we were like, well, what's going on? And his parents were like, oh yeah, he, he, he can walk. Um, he just told us that there's no room on the like ride for the walker, so we don't send him with it. Um, so we said that there's always room for more, especially for stuff like that. And I remember the first time that this kid who I knew for at least three, four years as a kid who sits in a wheelchair, stood up and took his first steps, we were all amazed. And it kind of taught us how we might think one thing about these kids, but they never stop to surprise us and we shouldn't limit them with the things that they can do because sometimes they can do things that we could never imagine. And it was just amazing to see. Thank you, Danielle. Adi. Uh, in the, one of the summer camps that I was uh, last year, uh, like I said before, we are doing many fun activities. And last year, we had uh, we met someone who is training guide dogs to help blind people. And she told us about the process and how it works. And we saw the dog and all the things he can do. And it was really, really fun. And I, and I know that I, we learned a lot from it. Thank you, Adi. The third question is for you, Shira. What do you think is your add value as a teacher to your student and to the educational system in general? I think that my work as a teacher has a priceless added value um, to my students and their parents, to my school staff, and to the educational system as a whole. Um, first of all, my students are exposed to a teacher with a, dis uh, with a visual disability and become aware of the existence of different, of different disabilities um, and the importance of accepting people who are different, quote unquote. They learn that they can uh, treat me naturally um, and equally, even though I have a slightly, um, even though I have slightly different needs um, and that people with disabilities should be regarded first and foremost as persons who are a lot more than their disabilities. Um, and yeah, um, hope, hopefully these students um, get this message across to their parents and other people they know in, this, in their surrounding. Um, and this may result in the rise of awareness among the public. Um, that's one thing. Um, second, as a blind person, I model to my students through my actions, conduct, di and discourse with them um, that it's possible to succeed and to achieve your goals, even if you have difficulties of any kind whatsoever. They learn that um, if I have succeeded in achieving my goals and becoming a teacher, despite being blind, they can succeed as well if they, um, oh, only if they try. For example, um, I remember tutoring one of my struggling students individually, and he had um, a hard time reading and understanding a text. 
I asked him, I asked him to try and read to me out loud, uh, but, he, but he was reluctant at first. Um, I started reading the text myself. Um, and after a few lines that I read, he suddenly uh, got the strength to try and read on, on his own. And probably because he saw me reading to him in Braille and, and doing something that um, seemed almost impossible to him at first. Um, and then he just got the strength uh, to, you know, to, to try and cope with it. Um, and the third thing is that uh, the students as well as the school staff learn that people with disabilities um, have an equal right to be employed in a workplace and that we deserve to be um, employed um, in uh, mainstream workplaces. Um, for example, two weeks ago, I was asked by one of my students, do you volunteer at our school? Um, so I told him, no, I get paid just like any other teacher does. I get a regular salary. Um, unfortunately, I must say that many people presume that if you have a disability, um, you can't get paid, you, you can't um, work for money and get a salary and that, that you must pay um, regardless of your qualification. Um, yeah, probably because you don't have the same abilities as, as other workers. That, that's what people um, presume and, and it's a mistake. Um, and it was an opportunity for me uh, to show him just the, the very opposite. And I think that the younger the people, when they, they, when they are exposed to this, the better. Thank you very um, much. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you have another sentence? You no, wanted no. to give it to her? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Shira. You show a role model in your class. I'm sure <laughs> about it. <laughs> I want to address the next question to Michal. Josh and Tomer. Well, what gaps did you witness in society that led you to establish your organization? And what is the main tool by which you have chosen to promote your organization vision? Josh um, and Tomer. Yeah, okay. hello everyone again. Um, you know, the first thing that we did we, when we established, uh, we, and we thought about the idea of Michal, we looked at the, at the data uh, in Israel, and we saw that in almost every aspect of society involvement, uh, people with disability remain uh, aside. We can, we can see it uh, only, there is 20% 20, 20 of the society in Israel are people with disability. And in those 20%, uh, we can see uh, almost 50% does and don't work at all. Uh, low percentage is not uh, have a academical. Um, um, it's not, it's not uh, been in academic, um, and uh, even children do, doesn't uh, don't uh, finish high school, and uh, we can't accept those uh, those uh, those numbers because the the inclusion begins with young age. If uh, kids will not get the basic, um, the basic um, things that the normal kids get, it's going to be a, a lot worse when they got into academy, and it's going to be a lot worse when they trying to find a job. We want to 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 solve those issues from the from the beginning, when the kid uh, learning uh, what does his disability means. Uh, how to deal with this disability. Um, and it, uh, we want to give them advices and we want to teach them the way to be better adults, to be better persons and uh, not preventing them any kind of skill that, that will be useful for them when they will be trying to uh, uh, get a job or to be in the academy. Um, uh, we want to solve those problems from the beginning not to meet them when they will be adults, it will be much harder to, to influence them. Thank you very much. Josh, you want to add something? Yes, I would like to add, um, for me, you ask uh, Odenia why you, you got there, why you um, decide to go and you know, raise uh, organization. And for me, um, doing the all things that everyone here says, 
For me, it was the fact that when I was a, a kid, a child, I didn't saw or met any other um, person, adult with disability, as same as, as mine. And you know, you, I didn't have the opportunity to talk to him, to ask him questions, to feel and understand that my problem is, is, is an issue, but it's not going to be a hard issue for my whole life, or I will find a, some solution to my issues and my, my um, uh, and I will get my experience uh, more and more white. If I will have, if, if I, I had this person uh, when I was a kid, I think I would uh, be a better person, a better man, and knowing faster, learning faster, um, but I didn't. I didn't found any other per person, adult with a, a visual disability, for example, and that um, maybe makes me feel good with myself and to understand that, hey, you can see it. Uh, there is, uh, there, the, here is a, a better version of yours when you uh, grow up. And, I think uh, it's not for me only. I think it's uh, something that a lot of kids, child, uh, children and, and um, youth uh, don't really meet in the day-by-day -day, um, um, routine. They don't really meet uh, people with disabilities that they've been in the places that I'm uh, in right now and let them understand that uh, they can be whatever they want to be uh, they can learn, they can uh, fit the society, they can lead the society also. What do you say about that? And this is what makes me feel like I want to be the person for the, these children, for this, uh, for this kid. I want to be the role model to um, let them understand that not everything's so bad. Uh, there is a lot of good and um, you need j just to uh, try to look for it and, 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 and search. Um, that's it for me. Thank you very much, Josh and Tomer. We will go to our final question so soon, but we arrived at the final question. Looking into the future life in 2040, what would you like to change for children with disabilities? What do you wish for children with disabilities? Uh, we start with Shira. I see that Shira already opened her video, so we start with Shira. Um, okay. Um, so I wish for all the children with disabilities in 2040 um, to live in supportive, inclusive env environments um, where they will feel that everyone believes in them first and foremost and accepts them the way they are. Um, this will make them grow happily believe in themselves, fulfill their potential in all aspects of life and grow up um, and grow up to become positive and independent adults. I also hope that there will be um, more technological advancements that will facilitate the, those children's daily functioning in various uh, fields and aspects of life and improve their um, integration in society as a result. Um, I hope there will be less ignorance and fewer stereotypes um, about disabilities among, uh, among the public and that children with disabilities um, will not be in any way bullied, humiliated or condescended, condescended due uh, to their condition. May all persons with disabilities have a better future. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I would like to hear Danielle. From Galim. Um, I have a wish for children with disabilities and a wish for children without disabilities. Um, for the children with disabilities, I wish that the background and the families and their community will not be a factor whether they manage and succeed in life and become a part of the uh, whole community um, of where they live. I think at this point, it's too much of an issue. And for children without disabilities, I wish that meeting a child or a person with a disability will be something normal and not an experience, nothing meaningful. It will be just something that happens on a daily basis. And that's it. Thank you very much, Danielle. And Sami, what is your, your answer for that? 
سامي النظرة في المستقبل لسنة 2040 أنا الصراحة بحب يعني أرجو أنهم الطلاب أو الأشخاص بشكل عام ذوي محدودية الحركة وذوي الاحتياجات الخاصة أن ينعموا بالإتاحة أهم شيء الإتاحة أنه يكون عندهم إتاحة في الحياة في الوسائل التي يحظى بها الأشخاص الآخرين من رفاهيات وسبل تعليم ومواصلات وكثير من الأشياء هذا حلم يعني أنه حابب أن أشوفه أمامي بالسنوات القادمة توفير إتاحة لهؤلاء الأشخاص وذلك أيضا من خلال إقامة صرح صرح كبير يعني عمارة كبيرة بناء بناء كبيرة اللي بتضم وبتوفر بتوفر فيها كل وسائل الحياة اللي بيحتاجها هذا الشخص الهدف من الهدف من هذا الشيء حتى يبلور مستقبله بالصورة المثلى هذا فإحنا لازم نمهد لهذول الأشخاص حتى يحققوا لأنهم هم مش ناقصهم يعني عقل حتى يتقدموا بحياتهم ويتعلموا ويصبحوا أطباء ومهندسون كل يعني وكل شيء وهي معنى هاجر واحدة منهم اللي هي رسامة وحتى فازت بجائزة بالكنيسة كنيسة ف... لكن الإتاحة عندنا والسبل اللي هي تمهد لهم بالوصول لهدفهم مش موجوده ف انا بحلم انه يكون عندهم هذا المكان البنايه الكبيره اللي تضمهم كلهم حتى هاجر واللي زي هاجر والاخرين ما تشاءوا 24 ساعه انه بدهم يصلوا مثلا هذا المكان يكون متوفر لهم 24 ساعه سواء يعني يعملوا كل المهارات اللي بدهم اياها شكرا سامي so i hope for them to enjoy their availability in life through the means that other trainees and students have in terms of luxuries in means of education through the establishment of a network that they are members of and where most of the means of life are available in order to optimally crystallize their future um, the wish is to have uh, to establish more buildings and centers to accommodate uh, Hajar and her friends and colleagues uh, to give them more facilities for life. And for example, what Hajar managed to accomplish during the uh, uh, her time of membership at Beta Galgalim, so she won uh, a prize at Knesset for one of her drawings. So this is the wish. Thank you. Thank you very much. And last, Tomer or Josh, I would like that you will answer to that question. What would you wish for children in the future? Um, you know, Josh, Tomer, Tomer, yes. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I think we're gonna want to be able to look in those eyes of those children that we work with, and. And realize that the, the, there is this is the best version of themselves. To ask them and to see them grow up like they want to be, and not the, and not that and not let the disability to stop them from being who, whoever they want to be. It can be anything, but we're gonna be so proud to look them in the eyes and say you are the best version of yourselves. Thank you very much, Tome. So I would like to thank you all for joining us today at our final multi-languages event of this campaign, almost like the UN. I am sure that every one of us could find an idea that touched our heart or gave us inspiration for including children with disability. This has been an incredible journey from the moment we announced my candidacy in August 2019 and until now, while this hasn't been a regular year, we have managed to have plenty of events and meetings, as it was the utmost important to me to meet you and have a discussion with you 
to present my priorities and vision for the committee and also to hear your view and perspective on the way forward for us as a global community. How can we further promote the right of persons with disabilities? We had a week visit in New York before the pandemic and we, where we started with our bilateral meetings with which later continued online. And I had the privilege to meet more than 100 of the de delegates. delegates from different countries. During my visit, we also had a wonderful reception with many of you. Once the pandemic started to change the way we live, we moved on to the virtual world and had a panel of experts on COVID-19 and safeguarding the rights of persons with disabilities, a panel on tourism and accessibility and the untapped potential of this market and a joint event with our fellow in Jamaica on living in community. And now we wrap our campaign with a topic that is close to my heart and my work education, children with disability and the children, education and children with disability. I hope that through the various events and meetings, you have had the opportunity to know me, my experience, values and vision better that, and that you'd trust me with your vote on November 30th. I wish to also thank the State of Israel for putting forward my candidacy. As I know what it's meant not only to me, but to our community of activists for the promotion of rights of persons with disabilities. And knowing that this can, can did so show the importance that our country gives to the right of persons with disabilities. If elected, I hope that I can bring all that I have learned and done in Israel for the right of persons with disabilities and enrich the committee with it. And finally, I would like to reiterate my strong belief in the impact that the convention has on member states, on the communities of persons with disability, and what an honor it would be for me to be a part of it. Refer to the last question, I wish that every child in 2040 would, would know the feel that he, he, he or she is a wonder, treasure, something that the world cannot exist without them. As I always say, inclusive society is a richer society. We must all be part of the change. And I hope that with your support, I will be. I would like to thank to all of the people that make this event uh, happen. And I would like to thank you for joining us to our interesting member that I learned from them a lot. I, want to, I would like to thank to you Val Geva from the Israeli mission and to Ms. Mrs. Tawson Hassan from the Israeli Department of Foreign Affairs for making this event a success. To Jack Zakri Gorchen that translate this event to sign language. Thank you very much. And to Kim Goldstein from Close Caption, which did the transaction. See you all on the election day next week. Take care and shalom.